So I've been asked to look at this electronic timer system. Apparently it doesn't work. This is a really old unit. Apparently I've had this one for years and years. It's one of the really early ones that came to the country apparently. It's very old, it'd be the original design. These are light curtains, so basically the black pole is a transmitter, so it's basically full of infrared LEDs. And the red pole is a receiver, and that has got infrared sensors in it. This has got a radio transmitter built into it, which sends data to this timer box here. And these are done as pairs, kind of. The black poles are interchangeable. It doesn't matter which way around they go, because they're just transmitters to these infrared sensors. But these two poles here are coded to this unit. These transmit signal to this, and this can then see if the light curtain has been broken, which then starts the timer. Apparently that's not working. I don't know what exactly the story is. I just got told it's not working. It's been put away for years. It's not been used for a very long time because they don't work. It's power this thing up and actually try it. So I'm just gonna do one pair of poles at a time. I'll do each pair and power this thing up. So there's a timer display. It's got lots of options. It's got like hidden menus and stuff in here and I know what those are. So not a big deal. So let's try this. Let's put the batteries in the transmitter first. So the battery pack's already prepared. I've shown videos on these before. So we have a light on that one that's saying red. It should really be green if it's got decent batteries. Red's okay, as long as it's not flashing. If it's flashing, I've got a problem. Let's check the other battery pack. That's also red, anyway. So these are the batteries that were inside the box of the unit, so not too bad. Let's turn the switch off, turn it back on again. Yep, that's working fine. So that part is at least powering up. So you've got a red curtain. This one normally does show red because it shows green when it's got a signal. And my 3D printer is just finished. That was quick. Turn it on. And we've got nothing on that one. That could just be bad connections with the battery here. Yeah, battery holder bad connections. I'm pushing quite hard on those springs to get it to come on. That could be part of the problem. Try it again. Screw it on. There we go. We've got a connection. Give it a shake. So basically, if I point these two things to each other, let's do it in the way you can see it actually. So you can see the red light there. When these are pointing towards each other, they should do a green light here to show it's got a signal. And there's nothing coming up. Let's change poles. We found the problem already. That'd be a bit quick. That one's powering up. There we go, green light. You can see that green light there. This black pole here may not have all the LEDs working. So when I move this pole away, the timer started. So which means this red pole is transmitting a signal and this is obviously transmitting infrareds okay. So that pair there is probably okay. So next thing I'm gonna do is check the other red pole because it looks like this black pole here is faulty. It appears that way at least so far. So let's change to the other red pole just to verify this one actually works. Because there could be more than one fault, you know, that's quite a common thing, you get more than one problem. We have nothing. Give it a knock. Nothing. Okay. Still nothing so far. Give it a push. Nothing. Ah. This one seems to be completely dead. There we go, now it's on. So this has got a dodgy read switch. So like I was thinking, more than one fault. Turn it off again, turn it back on, now it's coming on. That read switch was probably, maybe it's just stuck, maybe it just needed a, a movement once or something. Yeah, that's no, working fine. There's this little ring here, it's got a magnet on it. Slide it off. So there's a magnet inside here. And in this case, it's all rusty, because right, these are used outdoors and they get in the weather and stuff and they get rained on and these aren't coated so the little chrome coating on them disappears and they start rusting but it's still mostly there I mean I'm, I don't think that's really the issue now I've actually designed replacements for these and I've got some magnets to put in them and stuff like that so I actually do have parts to do that to make new ones but I don't think I actually need to I think it's going to be alright now now I've freed it up I think the re are stuck oh now it's not working again other magnet? no Is this dodgy connection again? Yeah, dodgy connections again as well. This is going to be a challenge. I've got to do a bit of maintenance on these things then. Come on. Yeah, that all needs some work. Okay, let's see if it actually powers up and sees 
the other pole. Turn that on. It's got a green light, so I can see the other pole, and it triggers the sensor. So that's fine. So both red poles are working. This one needs some loving, just to tidy up a little bit. I might replace that reed switch. It does seem a bit weak, and this service with battery connections. So we've got one pole which isn't transmitting. Now we've got to figure out how to test this thing. So here we've got my light meter here, optical power meter. So I've got the pole here, which is the 40 one, and I'll put it over there, getting nothing. Next one down, we're getting nothing. Next one down, I'm getting something, all right? So I'm getting a 34 dBm there, minus 34, uh, 8, 8 to 50 nanometers. And about the same on that one. So the other pole, show minus 34, it's doing slightly better, show about minus 32, minus 32, minus 32. Also 34 maybe, slightly off axis there, there we go. So yes, this one is working. This one appears to have two blind LEDs. Not just one, but two. Let's pull this thing apart and have a look at it, see, see what's going on. I could use the electric one since I've got it sitting here, but... These screws have got little O-rings on them, help weatherproof them. Mustn't lose those. This board should now slide out. And here you go, here's the unit. So there's actually not a lot to it. What? <laughs> can you see what's wrong? I can see what's wrong. How about here? Can you see what's wrong with this one? This one here is the indicator for the power status and things like that, right? So ignore that. That's just normal LED. Pick my controller because that's just pulsing the actual infinity LEDs. Got a crystal there. Well, that stuff looks fine. There's a slight difference between some parts of this circuit though. Can you see what it is? So there's the read switch, this thing here. Exactly the same one as in the receiver units. So let's just point this out. So there's this section of circuit just here, and there's this section of circuit just here. Can you spot the difference? You got it yet? Well, I've got some EDs somewhere. They could be in here. I don't know, maybe. It could take a while to find them. So after much digging around, I managed to find some LEDs. I knew I had some, but I've only got two lots which are both 940 nanometer. I'm not sure those are right, but these look very similar to the ones that are already on it. I don't know if they should be 800 nanometers or 900, but uh, these are 900s. Yes, these are offset slightly to one side. So that gives me the orientation. And you won't be able to see it on camera because this thing's bloody tiny. So I'll spin it around, maybe you can see it, I don't know. Yeah, you can just about see it. So you can see the actual dome part is on to the right hand side there. So that gives you the orientation of the actual part based on that. So let's put some flux on these pads. You won't need much, there's not much of it here. Pads are tiny. Come on, there you come. Now I'm going to have way too much. Put those ones on there. Put some fresh solder on, I've got flux on there as well. Put a bit of fresh solder on these. Just touch them up. Getting ready to go. Just grab the part. Don't flick it off. <laughs> now, because there's already solder on these, I'm going to have to mess around with these a little bit getting down, but I'm not too worried about doing that. So it does get straight, that'd be nice too, wouldn't it? Placement I think is quite important on these because they do go inside the lens. So getting them exactly the right spot I think is quite an important aspect as well. Right. I will come back and tidy it up after, but I think that is basically right. Right, 
All right, let's come back and clean these up. Getting a bit nicer. Now got them down. Yeah, so having those LEDs missing certainly explains why it didn't work at all. So it's interesting that we're missing though. Maybe someone tried to fix it in the past or something, or someone had it apart because they're being nosy about how it worked and they messed it up. That's probably more likely. I just weren't careful about how they took the thing out of the unit. Because you take it out the wrong way, it does tend to snag. Anyway, clean enough. Let's try it out. Does it bloody work now? So these are the batches I was talking about before. With these little springs on the end. So these can get corroded because if you get any water inside them, if it runs down the board, it will naturally sit on the end of these springs. So that's where they can be problematic. So slide that in. When you put this in, you've got to slide it, basically twist it slightly at an angle. So it doesn't get snagged. And then when you get down to about the right place, you can align it. Here's a bit of a trick to it. One screw in, see it somewhere. There it is. I'm going to fully assemble it because I'm confident it'll work. This will be the case where it doesn't work. It's always when you're confident is when it's not going to work. So I'm going to jinx it right now by doing that. Let's put the top back on. Turn it on. We still have power. It's a good start. That is showing a signal. I'll turn this off, it'll disappear. So have we gone again? We'll come back. There you go. Right. Excellent. Those LEDs are working. We'll turn the timer on. Break the beam. There you go. Stop it. Break this beam. Break this beam. Is there somewhere? And break this beam. Here we go. It has like a two second delay as well before it actually trigger. Could just be I'm doing it too quickly. Yep, yeah, so that's all working fine. That looks like this pole is now fixed. Excellent. Now the question is though, will it work over a longer distance? Because these have to work over a couple of meters. So I've now got one light pole on one side of the room, one on the other side of the room, so it's about three meters apart. It's not as good as being outside. Outside you've got daylight which affects things as well and that can cause problems with the reception of the actual infrared signals. But this distance apart seems to be working fine indoors at least. So it's just go through. Yeah, that worked. That beam, I have to wait two seconds. Did it too soon. That one's alright. That one, wait two seconds. Doing it too soon again. This one, yeah, all working good. So that distance is working fine. I should actually take this outside and put it in some sunlight and actually see if it still triggers properly. But if it does, then that's okay. Now I still need to repair this pole because this one's got some issues too. So let's also test these new ones that I've just put in and see what this thinks of them in comparison to the originals. So the original ones, that's an original one there. I'll basically put it on the lens. So it's about 34, 850. The one I've just put in, it's about 32, 850. Cool. This one here, very similar again about 32 a 50 so that looks fine let's change the wavelength again 980 so once i've got our 940s they're kind of in between that's minus 30 there about minus 28 there about minus 32 there these ones are weaker the original ones are weaker at the higher wavelength but yep that seems to be equivalent at least as far as power up it goes so let's look at the red one now this one so i had that bit of an issue with potentially the reed switch being bad i don't know about that though it could just be it's a bit stuck it's been sitting for years unused it's seemed to be working fine after that it just purely seems to be the battery contacts now it's exactly the same as the other pole no difference there and my stomach's growling must be lunch time oh look and it is hey there's no there it is it's okay i thought <laughs> i thought i didn't have a top in it for a minute so now we've got to pop this out so this is the more interesting side This doesn't have the modification on it. 
So some of these have got a modification where, obviously this is an early unit, so it predates the modifications, I think. When this is mounted on here, we've got this post that's come through the PCB, and it does sort of just snap onto them, right? But the later units have actually got some little screws in these that force them to stay open, because otherwise, if it gets an impact, this can actually dislodge and fall off. I've actually found that on units before, where this, this board actually has fallen off the, the carrier, and it's been floating around inside and caused problems, so... Yeah, this was already half off, so that's something I need to look at. But yeah, this is the more interesting side. So instead of having infrared LEDs, we've got infrared sensors. A bit more going on there. So you re-switch exactly the same as the other side. And that's the part which, say, I think may have been stuck before, but once we operate it, it seemed to be okay. Another sensor there, power supply, voltage regulator, sensor, peak microcontroller, wireless module. So I've seen different versions of these things in the past. This is the first version like this I've seen. So this may be the very early revision of what they did with these. Very interesting. I mean, they've all got the same kind of dates. And what dates this one? 2005. I've seen different ones. I've seen like a SIP, which is you know, standing on the board by itself, standing. There's also the SX, is it one, two, something? I can't think of what it is now. Simtech devices, anyway. Simtech modules, which they use in these, which are what's used in the current versions, I think. And there's the indicator really the our issue is down this end. So straight away you can see one spring is much shorter than the other and that should not be like that for a start. So maybe this one here is just not quite touching. This one's touching. I can feel this one touching. Maybe this one's just compressed in so much it's not actually touching. Of course there'll be bad joints on here. They sometimes crack but not often. They're usually pretty good. So it's probably just this spring. Probably needs a bit of a clean up. I think I just give these springs a clean up. Stretch this one out and that probably solve it. I'll stretch these springs out, but I just noticed that this one here, this frame, is slightly damaged. And it's making the spring go slightly wonky. And it could be affecting it, because the battery contacts can be a bit funny on these things. So I might actually just straighten this up a little bit to make sure it's nice and straight. So I've got some IPR on this towel here. It's going to get rid of a rub like this. And then some dirt's come off. So yeah, there's definitely something there. And it's only at the very end that it actually touches, so I'm not worried about being too fussy with this. And the battery holders can have similar problems too. I actually have brand new battery holders. The problem with brand new ones is actually the batteries are held too well. They tend to actually get too tight and they won't push down to the end. Um, there's a bit of corrosion evident on these. Only really slight. It's not too bad. It's seen far worse. Like I said, I think I need to put some little screws in these to secure them in place. Alright, so the screws I've found, which are the right size, are hexagonal bits. Let's whack one in there. These are 2mm screws. I have to go very far. I just have to hold it in place and not be in a position where they'll fall out. I probably should have paid attention to it on the other unit actually because the black pole probably had the same situation. So this is a factory modification which I'm basically just replicating. So I'm not actually bodging it, it's just something they do as well to make sure the boards don't fall off. That is now solid. Yeah, that's nice and strong. Alright, let's put this thing back together. I'll slide in there. Again, I've got to be in at an angle, right? Otherwise it catches on everything. I might have to go that way even. I'm not sure. We'll see. You can't just go straight down because it catches. Even though it's catching. There we go. I mean, the re-switch I'm slightly suspicious about, but I'll do some long-term testing on it and I'll just try like leaving it off for a few days and turning it back on again. I don't have to get this back to them urgently or anything like that, so I can play around with it for a while and just do some testing and just make sure it continues to turn on. If it does play up again with that re-switch, I will replace it. Well, one problem I've seen with these re-switches, they actually stick on. Sometimes they actually won't turn off unless you disconnect the batteries. Just turning the magnet isn't enough. I've seen that lots of times. That's a common failure. I've got a fix for that. It's inrush current, which causes that problem. Yeah, one of the springs is out of alignment a little bit. The one which I was looking at before, it actually bent upwards slightly. That left spring, so it's upwards a little bit. Might need to push that down a little bit. Okay, I just tweaked that spring very slightly, because it was bent up very slightly. I just managed to adjust it a little bit, and that's working much more reliably. I'm happy with that. So the only real question now is whether the magnet here or the reed switch, might slightly the reed switch, is going to be a problem or not. But right now it seems to be 100% of the time working perfectly. It's not faulting. I reckon I can call that a fix. Check out the other videos down below for the other stuff I've done, like the other videos on repairing these farm tech timers. And I'll continue playing with these, make sure they're all thoroughly checked over, but I think I'm basically done with these really. Subscribe link over there. Patreon support link over there if you want to help support the channel. Bye.